Good morning, everyone. We are team two and our project is the automated solar power lawnmower. The team members are Harrison, Matthew, Ross, and me, Katherine. And our advisor is Dr. Stefanakos. Our table of content includes problem solving statement, system block diagram, sequence diagram, PCB diagrams, calculations performed, hardware and software development, testing and plan, and work division. Problem statement. With the automated lawnmower, we are addressing the following problems. Global warming, contamination is a big issue nowadays. It increases every day because certain equipment we use that require gasoline to operate. Another issue is the everyday expenses. Some people cannot afford to pay a monthly fee or simply they don't want to pay it because it puts more stress in their economy. And for those who decide to do it by themselves, the task becomes a time consumer every week. The last of the problems we're addressing is for the elderly community. It is well known that every year it becomes harder for an elderly person to complete their task at home, mainly because most of the equipment is heavy and or complicated to use, taking their time and energy. Problem solution. With the mower, we intend to solve the issues previously mentioned. For global warming, the mower will decrease the burning of fossil fuels used daily because it uses the renewable energy from the sun. For the everyday expenses, the mower will help with the economy of many households because people can stop paying monthly fees to mower companies by using the mower with no further expenses. And last, the mower will help el elderly people since it is fully powered by the sun, fully automated and is customizable. Elderly people won't need to do anything but to place it in the desired area of their lawn, saving time in their day. Here's the block diagram for our system where each block represents a different module of our project. The solar panel charges the battery using the charge controller and the battery powers the whole system. The sensors tell the microcontroller when to stop and turn and the H-bridge chips are used so the wheels can move in reverse when turning. A relay was used to turn the blade motor on and off. This is the sequence diagram that our program logic follows for movement and also a clip of it in action. The mower repeats this back and forth motion until the set amount of cycles is reached depending on the size of the area you want to cut. This is the wiring diagram and schematic we use for the PCB. Each box contains a main component that are connected to each other using net ports. At the top left, we have the microcontroller box where you can see each individual connection labeled based off of what it goes to. On the right side of that, we have the power input. And in the middle, we have the left side motor drivers and the right side motor drivers. And at the bottom, we have the sensor inputs and the blade motor relay. Here's the PCB schematic where you can see each component in its place on the board as well as the traces that connect them. We made sure to use large enough traces to carry the required current. And here's the final PCB with all the components mounted. I will discuss some of the calculations that drove many of the hardware design decisions. Our device is fully powered by the attached solar panel recharging a lithium iron battery. The two main power consuming components are the four wheel motors and one blade motor. Each wheel motor has a rated power draw of around 11 watts for a total of 44 watts. The blade motor consumes at 14 watts for an estimated total power draw of 60 watts. The chosen lithium ion battery has a capacity of 108 watt hours but we use 96 watt hours to ensure the battery is never completely drained. We chose lithium ion as it is the most power dense and easy to recharge battery with the solar panel. The device's rated power draw is estimated to operate for over an hour and a half. The actual time reflected as testing, was reflected as testing and we usually went over one hour easily with load. The video time lapse at the bottom shows a no load test running for over two hours. The next is the power supply for the recharging of the battery. The attached 30 watt solar panel should recharge a battery in just over three hours under ideal conditions. 
with Florida having a daily average ideal sun cover of almost six hours, the mower can definitely run at least once per day. Some calculations for speed based on the wheel, si the wheel and motor RPM are listed on the slide for a final estimation that the mower will complete a 6,500 square feet lawn in three days. So I'm going to be going over some of the software that we have in our code for the mower. On the left picture is some of the code that we use to program the distance between the mower and the object in front of it. As you can see, if there's an object over 50 centimeters away, then it's considered no obstacle in front of it. And once that object becomes within a distance of 50 centimeters, it picks up as an object in front of it and it begins the sequence that can be seen on the far right side. This code basically runs through a set pattern uh, that it'll go straight once the object is detected, it turns right, as you can see in the video, and then it'll go straight again and then until it's in the next pattern of grass. There's also a 100 millisecond delay built in that avoids the mower from sending a signal for any nuisance object detections like bugs flying in front of it or grass flakes in the air. And then the middle code basically is our safety code for if a person walks in front of it while it's performing its sequence. Uh, it will go straight and once someone walks in front of it, it'll cut the blade off and stop the mower until the, uh, the person moves out of the way. And we're going to demonstrate this in the next video here. So basically it's cutting along the grass. This is the video of it just performing its normal sequence. And then it'll keep going straight. And as the individual walks in front of it, you can hear the blade stop and the mower stop. And then once they move out of the way, it continues. Here are some of the hardware solutions that we came up with along the way while creating this mower. So on the far left top corner, you can see uh, the underside. We have an eight inch blade that cuts the grass and it's protected by an inch and a half deep steel L bracket that's uh, it's safe for anyone getting their fingers or any objects getting underneath it and getting cut by the blade. Uh, it also has seven and a half inch wheels that are powered by individual motors on each wheel. Uh, the solar panel on top is a 30 watt solar panel that is three square feet. And the green outside wall is a plexiglass that was painted on the inside to give it a nice smooth gloss finish. The testing plan includes many essential methods of checking to see if the mower meets the design requirements. The programming testing was mainly done in the field, tweaking hardware and software to achieve precise programming for tuning and stopping, etc. The hardware testing came naturally throughout due to limitations. For instance, the initial frame was too heavy as the plexiglass was too thick. We then opted to use a high density plastic that was thinner and as you can see we reinforced with the L plates as it was a little bit flexible. The materials used were also, were also chosen to pass all the test requirements for heat and durability as the painted plexiglass and the solar panel ensured heat did not get to the internal components. The rear wheel traction was also reduced to pass the second turning test as shown in test 10 as it had too much traction and the turning in one spot was not as good. So here we have a few videos of the mower cutting a few different um, styles of grass. As you can see, the bigger one, it's more of a weedy lawn and it's going over some high weeds. Uh, the top left is going through some thicker like St. Augustine style grass. And you can see on the sidewalk, it follows a straight pattern and gives it a nice smooth cut. We have the blade mounted three inches above the ground on these videos, just for your reference. And it, could handle high grass or thick weeds or pretty much anything pretty well. And here we are doing some water testing at USF Lawn. So we went there specifically when they had the sprinklers on so that way we can test um, our waterproofing to make sure the electronics still work. And it was a very durable machine. So we basically held the sprinklers on it for some time while it ran through its standard pattern. And um, as you can see from the two roof panel angles, it helps the water slide down smooth and we didn't have any problems with water on the inside. The total budget for our project exceeded the estimated value and there were a few components that increased the amount due to them failing in testing. For instance, the stepper motors initially chosen, chosen for their high torque eventually limited the movement due to their high holding torque. We end up switching to four geared DC motors that effectively moved the project. 
In the end, all the materials were split evenly between ourselves as we did not have a sponsor. The work was evenly distributed as we used many of the main documents provided by the professors to plan meetings based on the deadlines that were given. Thank you guys for listening to this. Uh, we appreciate your time and here's a short video of it going through its sequence.